best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan, I see in that. The Cloverfield Paradox. Crystal thought this was the Cloverfield parody. <laughs> Might as well have been. Yeah. What do you think? Um, weird and uh, strange, and then uh, basic. And it actually, to be honest, it felt really short. It did feel short. That's. I feel the same way. I think it was an hour and 40 minutes, yeah. but it felt so short. It moves along pretty like, quickly. Yeah, it does. Um, for sure. I remember we were watching it for something, and I saw there was only 20 minutes. It's like, oh, this is almost over. <laughs> well, there was a lot still that needed to happen when there was only 20 minutes left, and they didn't do most of that. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, yeah. It, so let's. I, I uh, so before we get into, it, I it was a similar thing that I had with Ten Cloverfield Lane. So I went into Cloverfield Lane thinking that it was going to be great, and it was just okay. And I went into yep. this expecting it to be awful, and it was just kind of okay. Like it was, yeah, almost the exact same. Uh. Uh, distance, I guess, of Conclusion. quality. Yeah, like, yeah. the, so like if I thought Cloverfield was a 10, this, it turned out to be a 5, or 10 Cloverfield Lane was a 10, turned out to be a 5, and I thought this was gonna be a 1, and it turned out to be a 5. You know what I mean? Like, right. It was just, they're the same, yeah, I understand. Well, anyway. Is that because there wasn't a lot of hype behind this movie? Because it kind of just came out randomly? Well, that, that was one of the things that kind of frustrated me is that I've wanted movies to do that for a long time. We've talked about it and I've talked about it. I was going to say, we, yeah, isn't that what you want? And, uh, it just wasn't a good movie. And I think that's why they were willing to risk it. <laughs> Cause I think, I think if the critics would have talked about it before it came out, it would have done much worse. Yeah, I mean, probably. even even though um, it's on Netflix, like I don't know, I don't know how much critical response affects things on Netflix, but I feel like bad reviews of this I don't probably would much. I think Netflix is a community driven ratings. Yeah, on the on That's the okay. site, but like word of mouth on the internet right. type of stuff. Yeah, I don't know how this movie. How did you find out that it it had come out that day? Um, it was just on like Twitter and stuff. It was all over the place. Oh, okay. So the the way they did it here was kind of weird. So it came out uh during the Super Bowl, well, not the during trailer. the Super Bowl. Right. Basically, it was like it showed the trailer, and then at the end of the trailer, it was like coming out tonight. Yeah. It's like, wait, what? Right after the Super Bowl, it was. It was yeah, it was so wacky. No, I think it. I think I was it was like, a cool idea. Oh, okay. Oh no, for sure. It's it. It, it just caught me off guard. Well, because like, um, say it would have been like, okay, it, it plays during the the Super Bowl, and they're like coming out in May. Everyone would have forgotten about it. Yeah, you know for what I mean. Sure. Like, I think Ten Cloverfield Lane really kind of soiled people's idea of Cloverfield. Like, I think 10 Cloverfield Lane had such a high expectation to be a sequel, and it was just not. And this doesn't really look like a sequel, and it wasn't really. I mean, technically, I guess it's a prequel, which has problems, because you watch watch Cloverfield Uh, 1, the whole thing uh, is the, uh, the monster lands in the ocean. You can see him when they're riding on the, the Ferris wheel. You can see him crash into the ocean like 20 something days before he attacks New York. Right. I thought it was like a year, right? Uh, no, it wasn't that long. It was, uh, it's like a Cause, month or two. Cause he, cause that guy wasn't with the girl anymore. Yeah. 
I thought it, I thought it was like a long time. No, it wasn't, it wasn't super long, but it was like, it was within you know, the I'll same be year. honest. Be honest. I'll be honest. Let's, let's get into with, it. With Cloverfield, that was the one thing that I, well, I mean, there was a few things I didn't like, but that was the biggest thing that I did not like was seeing the thing crashed into the ocean at the end. Why? Because it felt, I, it, it, it I like, I like that it happened and I like that we got to see it. It just felt so like, what are the chances that we just watched this video, you know, this footage of this guy recording the, the events of that day and then also just so happened to have been recording the, the moment this thing crash landed yeah. on earth. Like same place, same time, happened to be recording. And the same, you know, aiming the right way. I don't know. It just felt like too, too unbelievable. Yeah. I would have rather it, I would have rather us see someone else's footage of something like that happen in the background. Yeah. Well, that, like I said, I don't have a problem with it happening. Just I didn't like that it happened. I don't know. It, no, yeah. But I, I, but I, I, but I, I, but I get it because it, it all takes place on the same tape. Yeah, you know, and and I get that. No, I I, yeah, I that, that was just one thing that I didn't care for. It seems very unlikely that a person who records the entire event also accidentally has the initiating event that happened months and months beforehand on the same tape. Yeah, and the fact that no one, no one saw this thing, like we saw it, so why didn't anybody else see it? Or the government? How did the government not know something crash landed into the the harbor? Right. Yeah. I don't know. But, but that's. I mean, that's. It's not. That's not a huge deal. Yeah. It's not a deal breaker. But uh, Cloverfield Paradox is supposed to explain all of that. It's supposed to show why everything yeah. happened. And, and did you get all the answers you wanted? I got a lot of answers that I didn't want. That's. Yeah, <laughs> answering the questions you didn't have. <laughs> um, basically, the what the Cloverfield Paradox says is there are many of those aliens that crash landed onto the Earth because of this event. And that is not what happened in Cloverfield. That's not the way they made it seem, at least. No. Because it... No, definitely not. It happened months before and then it attacked. And so when you, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Well, that's why it was really hard to nail down like the timeline. But let's, let's talk about the fact that this is also not originally a Cloverfield movie. Yeah. It was originally the God particle. Right. And is this also, was this also like done shooting? I don't know. And then what was Maybe. it going to be like in, in a similar vein of like the mist where, where they just opened up a a black hole that unleashed monsters? Well, I don't think so my my understanding or at least what I would think that happened was the god particle was just about them going to another dimension. No monsters. Oh, okay. And that basically the whole husband storyline was tacked on. And the monsters were tacked yes. on. Because the astronauts have Wait, no, but, yeah. no reference to the monsters. No expectation that they're going to, you know, find monsters. Like the monsters do not affect the astronauts at all. It's only the husband. No. So I think the husband's storyline, which felt very misplaced. It didn't make any sense why you would have that. Like it, the movie should have really just been about the astronauts. You not knowing what's going on. You don't need flashbacks to the Earth, especially, well, especially when yeah, you think that's... the Earth is destroyed. Like, why would you flash back to the Earth and let the viewer know that the Earth is not destroyed when the astronauts are not sure of that yet? Right. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, it should have kept it, us in the dark. Yeah. Why don't you tell me... Uh, Tell me the plot. Why don't you break it down? Okay. The the best that I 
understand it is the, there there is an energy crisis on Earth, and we're running out of energy for whatever reason. And there's something that they're going to do in space that is going to create pretty much un- unlimited energy for the entire world. I don't know exactly what it is. I didn't. I couldn't really follow the the scientifics part of it. It's basically but that's the gist of it. Um, Iron Man technology. Is that what it is? That's yeah. That's how what I understood it to be. Like the like, uh, the like big the arc, one. A reactor type thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was yeah. too dangerous to do on Earth, so they had to go up in space. But to what test did it have it. to do with space? It, oh, yeah, that's right. They had to do it in space. That, yeah. Okay. It, if it messed so up on they Earth, it could destroy everything. It. Right. And it's originally supposed to be like a two-month voyage in space, right? Yeah. But they can't quite get it right. They they keep doing these tests that fail for one reason or the other, and they end up being up there for like two years or something like that. Yeah. It was like 650 days or something crazy. Mm-hmm. So – they're they're about at the end of the line where it's like it's either got to happen now or we have to go back home because it's not working. And on like their 48th try, they get it to work. Whatever it is that they're trying to achieve, they get it to work. So everyone's excited. Everyone's happy. And then things start going wrong. Um, I guess it starts with – they start hearing the the screaming coming from the walls. Well, there's like a big power overload, and everything like yes. on the ship starts breaking and throwing them all around. But yeah, so that happens, and then they they can't figure out where they are, and then they hear. Do they? I can't remember if they lose Earth first or if they find that woman first. I think it was they find the woman first. I think. Yeah. I don't remember that. I don't remember the order either. Anyways, they they hear yelling or screaming from inside the wall. They tear it open, kind of find that there's a woman in there who nobody knows. And she's like intersecting with the ship. She's got like wires and tubes and cables and things going through her body. Um, so they cut her out. They take her to the, the doctor. He does his work. Um, but she seems to know these people. So everyone's like, how is this possible? We don't know who this lady is, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the gist of it is, is that a transported to an alternate dimension where they also exist, where all these people still exist. And it basically coincided with itself. The way that I understand it is, and she was sucked into their, so, dimension, uh-uh. but no. where she was sucked into was where the ship was already existing. So their ship, or the or the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Their ship showed up in her dimension, and yes, she, where she was already existing. Yeah, but and, the so the weird part with that is their her ship crashed and fell yes. into the ocean. Why? How did she end up on their ship? Like. It would make sense if, like, they just, like, teleported or something like that, and she was there, and that's how she ended up inside of all that. But they would have intersected with their ship also. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there would have been a lot more crossovers. And they were on the other side of the the sun than where the Earth was. So why, like, it doesn't, that part doesn't really add up to me. Her ending up on the ship seems very strange. No. With yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Um, but immediately she is already suspicious of one of the the crewmates because in her universe he betrayed everyone. He's working for the Germans and betrays everybody, so she does not trust him. Even though <clears throat> in in our dimension. He's a good guy. Yeah. Well, he was suspected to be a bad guy originally, too. There's like accusations from the uh, Russian guy to the German guy about how he was yeah. stalling. Then they show up and the girl's like, 
oh, he's definitely a bad guy, don't trust them. And they hack into his email and find all this correspondence with him and the German government that's proving that he was taking yes. his time. But, yeah, it comes to find out that that was just from him in the other dimension, yeah. not him in this <clears throat> dimension. Dimension 2. Yeah. Okay, so uh, from there, just wacky stuff starts happening. Yeah, I didn't like um, any of this. I don't even really remember the the order. So the, there the was guy, the Russian guy. Oh, the, that's yeah. right. The, the Russian, worms yeah. go missing. Yeah. <laughs> the worms go missing and somehow end up so in the, the worms body were for of experiments. Russia. Right. And my question is: Were they controlling him? Yeah, that wasn't. Uh... Uh, he starts talking to someone. He starts having a conversation. I don't know if that's just the worms touching his right. brain, but they don't, they don't clear that up. They don't ever explain why he thought he was There's, talking to someone else. Yeah, it's not addressed at all. He is talking to himself, essentially, and his eye is doing a weird twitching thing. Yeah. Um, but it turns so basically, out his body is full of worms and a gyroscope. Right. Um, did they explain where that came from? They did not explain why it ended up in his body, no. It just was there. Because it disappeared. Remember, they like opened it up and he's like, where could it go? Like, I strapped yeah. it down before we did the test. It should be in there. Then it just randomly showed up in his body, which was strange. Yeah, that see, that doesn't make sense. It would make sense if, like the worms or the the device from the other dimension ended up in his body, right? Yeah. Cuz they but it was the ones from their own dimension. Yeah, no, it doesn't it like I I think I've said it a few times on the podcast just in general, but like I hate movies that expect you just to be dumb to like like and not just to accept it. Yeah, not, not necessarily be a dumb person or that you have to be dumb to enjoy this, but like you have to, you, to you not can't, question it. you can't question things. You have to just see like, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever you say, that's what we'll do. Like it, it drives me crazy because there's no logic behind any of the stuff that starts happening. And they're like, oh, well, the dimension is, you know, trying to kill us basically. Like them being there is it, you know what it was? It turned into a Final Destination movie. Yeah, pretty. That's yeah. I agree with that. Um. So yeah, the Russian guy ends up dying, and yeah, he's, he's got lots of worms in his body. I expected it to be an homage to Alien. I thought it was going to bust out of his chest, but they all shot out of his mouth. Oh, I was thinking more like Men in Black, where he kind of becomes the cockroach. Mm. Like a human cockroach, he's yeah. just going to become a worm. And just slither around the ship. Um, so he dies, and uh, the next... Well, I don't know if I'm going to go in order here, but the next thing is we see the the funny man. <laughs> the funny man. Uh, the Irish guy? Chris o- yeah, Scottish Chris O'Dowd. Guy. I like him. He was yeah. in, uh. He was in Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. I really like him in Bridesmaids. I just wanted a yeah, movie. He, he's a funny guy. Of Bridesmaids, his character from Bridesmaids. Yeah, that but, would be cool. Him as the cop. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's a funny guy. Um, he is like the, I don't know what, the engineer slash mechanical. Guy? I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. He just goes around fixing the ship. Yeah. Mechanical guy. Yeah. I uh, thought, I thought what he, the technology that they created for him to repair stuff was kind of cool. Like it was kind of a cool idea. It's like, uh. It reminded me of Gardens of the Galaxy 2. Did it? It's like a cock that you could electrify that would solidify over things like. Yeah. Uh, that's all. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. I thought that was kind of cool. So it felt very, he's, he's, it felt very Black Mirror esque. This whole episode, I don't know. Oh, it did for sure. Yeah. Um. So he's working on the ship, and then his arm gets 
well, he, taken into the ship. Oh, he's uh, he gets sucked into the wall. Which why? Why did that happen? There's no reason. No, there was no reason for that at no all. No explanation, nothing. His arm just gets sucked into the wall, and he's like, oh, 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 and they pull him out, and his arm is cut clean off. And he doesn't, but he doesn't feel it. Yeah, he it's, doesn't feel any pain, nothing. It's just gone. Um, And that was really weird. Yes. Well, they find it. They find his arm flopping Still around. Still moving around. And then it they, writes out... They, yeah. Check the other open guy's the body. Russian guy. Yeah. Why? Who, who was controlling the arm? Who was? Yeah, that's his arm. Yeah. So only he should be in control. He should have the knowledge. His arm should have the same knowledge he has. Like. Yes. Why? It's just dumb. It's, it's just, no, it doesn't make any sense. No, it's stupid. But yeah, they, they give him the, the, they get the message from the arm. Uh, and then they never like fix his arm. Yeah, no. They never, they don't even do try. They don't even talk about it. They just accept it as like, well, this is your life now. Feel free to take this, uh, living arm home with you. Although, if, obviously that could never happen. But if that could happen, if that did happen, and you're in space, the move is probably don't worry about it because if it's not hurting you and it's not killing the guy doing the surgery is definitely going to hurt, right? Like it's going to one, put him out of commission for a while while he heals up. It's going to be painful. It's going to take time and effort and all this other stuff. So the move is probably, well, if you're okay, then sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I guess the question is, since he's not really in control of that arm anymore, if they were to somehow reattach it, would he ever regain control? Or would that arm just have its mind of its own? <laughs> just have a mind of its own, just writing notes just, out all the time. Just flopping around and hitting himself. And yeah. I, I He he could have just connected it with that, that caulking that he was using. <laughs> just connected his arm with it? And just zapped it and good to go. Well, so he, the way he ends up dying, so they, they have to shut off the oxygen so they can have more power to do another test to set it off. Yes. And, uh, he is in the room, shuts off the oxygen and everything magnetizes. And all that caulking ends up, which, okay, this, this didn't make any sense. Like, I had a real problem with the, with that. So it's it's stretching across towards where the magnetizing or the magnet is at, right? Stretching yeah. across like twenty feet down this hallway and hits him. And so I was like, Oh, it's gonna just go straight through him, right? Like That's it, what I thought. Like a but sword. It grabs him and sucks him back to the wall. That makes no sense. It's zero not a sense. Light. Like why what on earth was the idea behind that? Like it should have gone through him and stuck him to the wall, but it it yeah, did the exactly. opposite. It become alive. Yeah, but it, it uh, it's dumb. It's so stupid. Um, yeah, the more that I talk about it, the less I like this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm on the same page. The one the one death scene that I thought was was super cool um, that I I don't think I've ever really seen before was uh-huh. the Asian girl in the water room, which one Oh yeah. Why was there all that water in that room? That where was that water coming from? Like that was uh I'm trying to remember what that was for. I don't know. I don't it just Yeah, a, I don't recall. It's just a room that started filling up with water. Like there's no there's no logical explanation to it, at least not put out forward by the movie. But so she's in there. She gets locked in the room. Starts filling was up a with tribute water to Charlie. Lost. Yeah, that's what she I wrote. Not Penny's boat on her hand, <laughs> and everyone was like, "What is she talking about?" <laughs> but the uh, the hatch to space, so outside, starts uh-huh. cracking from the pressure of the water, which I also had another problem with because Why? I don't feel like the water would have been enough force to bust that door open. 
Oh, no, no, like, definitely not. It should have been way strong enough to hold I, a room full of water. I didn't think it was the water. I thought it was just the ship was coming apart. Uh, maybe. And, like, the wa- it just happened to be there where the water is. That's a bit convenient, though, don't you think? Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the real issues with this movie. <laughs> Convenience. <laughs> but anyway, so, but as soon as the water or the, the door to space cracked open the whole room of water instantly turned into ice yeah and she froze which i'm curious if that's what would happen cuz um i almost feel like it would I seal feel like it, it off just explode i feel like it would almost seal it off like a second door of ice like an ice wall and then the rest would still be water yeah like uh yeah, that could be. You know, you know how like if you set gasoline on fire, it burns the vapors, not the actual gas. Like it just right. takes the top layer, basically. Like, I feel like that would happen with the ice. Like this cold snap would hit, and then it would shock the the edge, and then freeze there, and then maybe potentially it start getting more and Freezing. more. But yeah, but not all at once. Not all at once. Uh, I don't know. Um, were we able to get Bill Nye the Science Guy for this episode? I called him. I know we had a call out, and he said he would not talk to you anymore. Not after the last time. Not after the last time. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she dies. She she ends up into turning into an ice cube, which was so like just so tragic. The idea of that, her with her hand on the window, just looking at yeah. it, like. I, I just kind of wish they would have put in a few scenes where, you know, they just walk by that window and she's just still sitting there, you know? Like, like it's, it, it's, it's, it's a room that they're like constantly having to go by, yeah. like to get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it would have. It, it's in the hub. <laughs> like not even like to make a big point out of it or like maybe they would have covered up that window, but just something to be like, she's still there. I don't know. would have been. Yeah. Cause there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, there's no clearing that out. It's just a giant cube of ice. It's not like you can melt it down, especially if the water freezes that fast. So even if you melt it down, it's not like it's going to go anywhere. It's just going to keep turning back into ice. It's going to keep freezing. But Huh. So she's dead. So so her dead. Irish guy is dead. Um, The Russian guy is dead. Is that... Wait... Is he Irish or is he Scottish? Where is he from? The I guy, think he's Scottish. Maybe he's Scottish. Uh, so that leaves the captain. I don't know. His name is Chris. That's a very Scottish name. <laughs> he leaves the captain, the black guy. Yeah. Now, so something when the Scottish guy dies, his whole pod explodes and causes the ship that's spinning. So the sh- ship is spinning kind of like, um, I think the idea is to create gravity. You know, you spin it and it starts building right. its own gravity. Um, so it's just a bunch of gyroscopes basically. And so one of those breaks off, but it's holding on to another one that is spinning and it's throwing everything off axis, axis, yeah, all axes. The, the balance is off. And axis. so, the girl is like, if it gets past 25 degrees, it's going to destroy the entire ship. We have to detach it. And the captain's like, the only way we're going to be able to do this is if all three of us go. Me, you, and you. Yeah. They, they get so, there. And yeah, go ahead. nothing nothing happens. They get to the where they need to be. He's trying to turn this, spin this dial. It's not working. He's like, oh, we have to go to the hydraulic room. Come on. They walk out of the room. He closes the door behind him and locks it, locks himself Tribute in Tribute to Armageddon. Yeah, basically. He's like, this is the they only just way. They take things from a bunch of different space movies. <laughs> or just a bunch of movies in general. This is the only way this is going to work is if the doors are closed. He walks over. Or they get off of that side. like they're like, They say their goodbyes or whatever. He goes over and he yeah. does it. Now... He spins that wheel, and the thing he's standing on detaches and shoots off into space. Yeah. What was their plan 
So I, I have many, re- <laughs> many issues with this. What was his plan if that thing would have spun the first time he tried it when the other two people were just when standing? When they were all there? Yeah. The whole thing would have detached, right? Like, Closing the door uh, didn't help. It only helped him spin it. It didn't. Yeah, I guess I don't him. understand why. Why? Why did it take all three of them to go? Why couldn't it be one person? That yeah, that was my next point. Is he only ever did anything by himself? The the other two people almost died falling down, and he had to save them. Yeah, but yeah, it, that's weird. I didn't even think about that. There's there was no reason to have three people to, on that job, and. It was a suicide mission from the beginning because if it would have spun without the door closed, they all would have got sucked out into same, space. Yeah, same result. <laughs> it was so stupid. I didn't. I didn't understand that at all. They had to. They had to make him a hero. Yeah. So he's dead, and now it's down to four people. You have the main woman, uh, the German guy, the. Middle Eastern guy, the Indian guy, and the, the doctor, right? Yeah, Moses, I think is what his name was. Uh, no, it was. Uh, oh, hold on, it's a uh, Mobu or something. Oh, was it? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. I thought it was uh, Moses. What was it's it? not Moses. It starts with no. It's not Moses. It starts with an M. Michael. Yes. So you got Michael, the German guy. The black girl and Dimension Two girl. It was Monk. Monk. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Um, <clears throat> now, the Michael girl... is is actually the name of the dude on Earth. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you have Dimension Two girl tell she so she, Dimension Two wants to take all their files back to her Earth. So she can help yes. save her dimension as well as get them back. But she tells the main girl that her kids who are dead in the dimension one are alive in dimension two. And yeah, because in dimension one, uh, she also never goes to space. No, the main girl. Dimension two, she never sorry, goes to dim- space. Yeah, in dimension two, sorry. And, uh, so she, she's back at home. With her kids and her husband. And so Dimension One character, main character is like, why well, I, I, I'm gonna go to Earth here. I'm just gonna stay in Dimension Two. And this drove me crazy because this, a, a similar thing to the idea with, uh, Ten Club for Lane about how I wish they would have played with that decision making. That definitely oh, should have yeah. been like that conflict of like, well, my kids are alive here. I can see my kids again. But I'm gonna leave my husband forever. Like, also, I'm gonna show up and there's already another version of me. Like, they yeah, may what not. Was the plan? Yeah, like this. I would just kill myself and Wait. take her place. <laughs> That's your idea. Well, kill Dimension Two version of me. Yeah, and just try to fit in. Yeah. <laughs> just make Dimension Two version go to work, and you can stay at home. Yeah. It'd be like duplicity, multiplicity. Um, uh, yeah, I yeah, exactly. Let's see if we can all coexist. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, there was no no decision making on her part. She was like, you know, what, I'm done. I'm gonna do this. My husband would agree. And it's like, wow, you you really could have played with that and uh, shown emotion and like. Cause that would be such a difficult choice, you know? Right. Like, you imagine your kids being dead, but you have a chance to see them again? Like, there's, I don't, there's not a lot people wouldn't do to do that. But at the same time. Did you, yeah. Going, Did you ever watch the show Fringe? Uh, no. I know you loved it. I tried watching it and it's not very good. Oh, no, it's a good show. But. They, they play around a lot with different dimensions and alternate timelines and yeah. realities. And so it's crazy. Uh, spoilers for a fringe, anybody. Again. <laughs> spoilers the main for a fringe, dude, the 10 year old show. Yeah. That got Come canceled. to find out. Yeah. Well, it ended. All right. Calm down. So take it easy. 
Uh, another J.J. Abrams show, by the way. Oh, is it? I think I, just produced. I, I like him less and less on it. based on these last two movies. Ah, uh, that's rough. What about Star Wars? Did not care for that one either. That doesn't change your opinion on him? <laughs> um, the Force Awakens was... It felt something other than a J.J. Abrams thing. It was a Cloverfield movie. Oh, is that what it was? Cloverfield and the yeah. Star Wars story? It's No, it's Star Wars the Cloverfield story. Oh. Gotcha. Um, but basically, so real quick, in, in, in Fringe, right, there is an alternate timeline where all these characters exist. And the main scientist, Walter, uh, he has a son. Uh-huh. And uh, in our reality, come to find out that he really died when he was a kid. He got really sick and he died. And the dude went to the other dimension and kidnapped him and brought him into this one so he could have his son again. Um, so he grew up in this other dimension, never knowing that he was really from the other one. And his father had kidnapped him from his other father. Huh. It's, it was a, it's, it was, it was a, I thought it was a very, uh, compelling storyline. Yeah. I would definitely kidnap my kids from my dimension two self if my kids had died. Oh yeah, absolutely. That wouldn't even, that wouldn't even be a hard choice. Like, sorry, sucks for you. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I should feel bad about that, but that's legitimately how I feel. If there was, if I had an option to steal my kids back from a a second dimension version of myself, would not care about that version of myself. Even if it meant I probably had to like kill that version of myself. Like, look, dude, not my problem. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so. She's, she decided she's gonna go back to Dimension 2 Earth. Um, but then Dimension 2 Lady, uh, decides, you know what? I'm not gonna let you guys take the ship. It's gonna take us years to ever build this again. My dimension is already at war. I need this. And starts shooting people up. Yeah, she kills the doctor. She shoots the German guy. Um, I, I, I don't remember exactly what happens. So then the main character comes back. So she gets pistol whipped in the head. Yeah, that's get, right. Gets back. So the Dimension 2 girl was going to send her in a, they were going to go back together in an escape pod. In a pod. Yeah. But she pistol whips her, knocks her out. And she wakes up with like 10 seconds left. And it's like, this is the only moment where she decides something. Like, She's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Like, you can see it on her face. Yeah, where she actually thinks about it. Yeah. And, but the decision is, do I save my friends or do I go to Dimension 2? It has nothing to do with her, you know, like, that, that was the decision. And so she stays on the ship, which, one, a hundred percent, yes. Like, I mean, I guess unless the decision is, do I leave or do I stay and possibly die? But. Because the escape pod is still going to be there, right? Like if she goes and stops the girl, yeah, exactly. The escape yeah, pod, no, she made the right choice. Hadn't left, so it's not like that option was gone for her. But so she goes and uh, fights the girl and gets the gun and shoots the glass that's going into space, and it cracks open. Well, she shoot. <laughs> The uh, Dimension Two girl, her kids. yeah, Dimension Two girl put on a video of her kids, and she <laughs> she had to shoot through her kids' video uh, to like symbolize her giving up on her kids. I guess I, I it was, letting go of it. Yeah. yeah, it was a very strange symbolism, but shoots through them. Dimension Two girl gets sucked into space. She's able to get. But also, you could have just shot the lady. Yeah, a hundred percent. <laughs> you didn't have to like shoot your kids symbolically, <laughs> or to possibly get the suck into yourself space. into suck yourself yeah, out of like, space. That's gonna just kill everyone. And I wanted to know what this gun was shooting. Was it shooting bullets? Like, because it was a yeah, three, it was like three, plastic bullets. It was printed gun. Three D printed gun. So it was just. I mean, I guess all their three D printers could make anything because they printed out bagels and stuff like that. So you could probably yeah. have it print out explosives. 
But Dimension Two Girl gets yeah, sucked she, out into space. Um, we're then, dead. Yeah, she's dead. And then she, the main character, and the German guy get on and get themselves back to Dimension One, and then turn on the power and get everything going. So here's here's the problem I had with that. So it took um two years and forty eight tries. To get to where they were for, into Dimension 2. Yeah. And they have to do the same thing to get back, right? Yeah. To back to one. Who's to say it's not going to take another two years? And they're not going to run out of resources. Well, they had... Why is it so easy the second time? They had enough... Um, they had enough power to do it three times from the beginning. So they do it once to Dimension 2, do it twice to get back, and then the third time to power everything up. Uh, so that was all the options they had left. But because on when the time that sent them to Dimension 2, the Asian girl figured out, oh, if we ventilate everything, it will fix the problem. And so ventilating everything. Oh, that's right. And that's why she was in that room. Yeah. So that's, that's what fixed everything was the, what she had figured out. See, that's okay. That explains where all that water came from because that room was directly under the bathrooms. So that was toilet water? Uh, uh Yeah, but before it was used, it was like clean toilet water, like not used yet. Are you sure? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, And so they, they get there, they turn the power on, they're like, you need to send up repairs, uh, a repair crew, and then the German guy and the main character get on an escape pod and head back to Earth. And it cuts over. So let's, let's, let's pause it there. Ooh, pause. And, 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 and talk about the on Earth storyline real quick. Oh, yeah. Very completely so we've got, unnecessary, but yeah. So we've got the guy, he's the husband. Yes. And he's on Earth living his life. And she's up there. Then they disappear. And, Someone calls to tell him, hey, just so you know, your wife is gone, but we don't think they're dead because there's no debris, but just keeping you in the loop, she's they're gone. Yeah. And uh sorry, pause on this. I want to go back even oh. further. In the very beginning, there is uh the guy from Gotham and Ten Rules. Oh, yeah. Eight. Donald Logue. Donald Logue is telling, he's on TV talking about the Cloverfield Paradox and this is something that I've noticed that happens a lot in movies lately, at least in bad movies. It's yes. important to set things up, right? It's important right. to say like, oh, this is a possibility. What you need to do though is give other options as well. Like it, he just laid out like, this is going to happen. This is why it's going to happen. And when you watch it, you're like, oh, okay, this is clearly is what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, and that's what I said. I was like, oh, so that's the plot then. Yeah, and uh, it's important to have that set up so you understand what happened, so it's not just thrown in your face. But you can't make it seem like, oh, this is you, – you can't just give it all away like that. That's not that's not how you set something up. That's how you just spoil everything. And so that, I would like – yeah, I that, know what you're saying. I w- that had happened, and then when the spaceship disappeared, the husband was like, it's the paradox, right? It was a Cloverfield paradox. He was, he was right. <laughs> like, it just, it was so, it, you can't, you can't have this crazy, like, all this stuff that doesn't exist happening and people just be on board with it so easily. It, it's yeah. very, it's very difficult to watch. Now, I don't know if this is something you picked up on because I didn't, but it was something that I read later. Supposedly, he is the brother of John Goodman's character from Cloverfield Lane. <laughs> I, I, I had not. I guess, heard that. I, I guess he had the same last name. That's what people are saying. I That's didn't a, see that. I didn't notice. No, but I I would not be surprised. That, but uh, the the lady and and so the lady that he was talking to on the news or on the, the interview or whatever yeah. was the same lady. Which this is true. Was the same lady. Who was in Cloverfield Lane that was like on the outside dying? The news anchor? Yes. She's the the girl who died? Yes. 
I thought the news anchor was black. No. Hmm. You have lost your mind. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Anyways, I did, that's not something I caught. That's just something that someone had pointed out later. Yeah, yeah. Basically confirming I just don't that see this color. takes place, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> that takes place before Cloverfield Lane. At least at some point. Oh, I don't, I, oh. I think the idea was it took place right before. Right. Well, at, well, at the end, we talked about in how we think this timeline works. Yeah. Okay, so um, he's on Earth. There's the Cloverfield Paradox, and then all of a sudden there's, like, explosions, right? And fires. And yes. he's dry. See, this is why I, I don't even remember because it was so boring to me. <laughs> he's He's driving around. Well, he's trying he's, to get back to the hospital because he sees the explosion okay. from his apartment. I think he's, he's a, a doctor, right? Yeah, he's a doctor, so he's trying to get back to his apartment or to the hospital from his apartment and pulls up on a destroyed building and gets out, sees the monster in the background and hears a little girl crying. Oh, was there a monster in the background? I yeah, didn't even know. You notice. can see it through the smoke. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> so he saves the little girl and takes her back to his bunker and is taking care of her there. Now, there but was Why does he have a bunker? I don't know. They'd never mentioned that. Um, but he, he is texting someone. So what happened? I was in the middle of watching this movie and the power in my town basically went out. Um, it's the Cloverfield paradox. The, oh yeah. Right. So right at that scene when he's finding the girl, the power in my yeah. house shut off. Nice. So I ended up having to finish this movie on my phone with my phone data. Or, well, I ended up going to a restaurant because the data was too <laughs> slow. But I ended up finishing the movie on my phone, and I could not read any of the text. So if oh, I couldn't either. Oh, good to know. So um, I have no idea yeah, who I, he I can, was texting. I can never read. I can never read text on uh, movies and shows. Yeah, they, they. You need to put them on the screen, whether in yeah. subtitles or like pop it up, or I don't know. Like, I mean, they, it's easier to do in like or, a teen comedy where you can just have the text pop up on the screen, but I don't know. It's, yeah. it's impossible to read it, especially if you're watching it on a phone or something like that. If you're not watching it on a giant screen, it's really hard to know what's going on. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's talking with someone. Um, I, I just, I don't, I was so confused at, at, the bunker, because is it not? I, I don't know if it's the same, but it's the same style bunker that John Goodman has, right? It looks the same. Yeah, I don't think it's related. John Goodman was in the states, and he was in the UK. Oh yeah, that's right, huh? Okay, so he takes the girl to the bunker because her parents are missing or gone. Yeah, her uncle. And then her parents. Yeah, are, her parents are in another place. She was with her uncle and aunt, I think. I was trying to figure out if there was any significance to this girl at all. No, I don't think There's so. None. I don't think so. There's none at all. Hmm. So he's in his bunker. Do we know how long they were in Dimension Two? No. Okay. How, how because hours it seemed like, but there's no way of really knowing. Because they finally make it back to Dimension One, and they're in the pod, and they are heading back. And the, the dude gets a phone call saying, Hey, we found them. They're alive. You know, th there's, there's only two of them left, but your wife is still alive and they are headed back right now. And the dude starts freaking out, not wanting her to come back to earth because of the monsters. Yeah. Now to me, that felt like a long time had gone by and yes. like the monsters had established like dominance over the earth. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was it supposed to only be like a day later or was it supposed to be a long time later i have no idea but i, I do have another question about that scene did the monster okay. that jumped up out of the smoke eat the escape pod was that smoke i thought it was just like so tall that it was up the clouds yeah whatever the clouds the smoke whatever it was did it eat yeah, the escape I pod really 
I couldn't even tell. Did you watch it on your phone too? No, I watched it on a big screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I don't know what your excuse was. I'm I was just wa- really blind. <laughs> I was watching it and I was like, okay, I think I can see something falling and then the thing jumped up and like gro- uh, roared. And I was like, wait, did he just swallow the escape pod whole? But I, I, I was very confused by what happened. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, the timeline is, is very wacky. And I would like to say that could easily not have happened. I'm not like dying on that crown or that heel about the monster eating the escape pod. But from no, I, watching it on my might phone, that's right what it looked like. Them. But he, he just didn't want her to come back to a world that was occupied by the aliens. Yeah. And, and which was another thing that frustrated me because basically the tragedy was she didn't just stay in dimension two and have everything she wanted. Like that was the, yeah. that was the she sad came part. She back to a worse earth. Yeah. And I just like, what was the message here? You know, like. If you get the opportunity to stay in Dimension 2, you take it. You take it. Just always stay in Dimension 2. Uh, I don't know. This movie's bad. But so yeah, timeline not- is Cloverfield Paradox. Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane is in the middle of Cloverfield Paradox. Okay, so hold on. So so when they do the test that, that transports them to Dimension 2. Yeah. That is when the monster comes down and lands in the ocean in Cloverfield? Yes. So it's not even – so then it's it's sometime later. They're not immediately doing stuff like they are in the Paradox. Well, that was, that was what I was saying was it doesn't make sense because in Cloverfield 1, it definitely seems like there's only one monster because he lands in the ocean and it's months later before he attacks. Yeah. Cloverfield Paradox but makes it, it seem like... It's like immediately. Well, like they you, just fell out and took over. That there was multiples of them, like hundreds of these giant monsters that landed. There's no way that they would all just sit and wait and coordinate attack. So why didn't the people in New York know about the monsters going on everywhere else? Maybe they did and they just didn't care. That's why they were partying. We made yeah. it. New Year's Eve. Woohoo! We're it, still alive. It was an end of the world party. Yeah, it just, I don't know. It, 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 it's dumb. So it almost seems like the the end of Cloverfield Lane is the is the furthest along in the timeline, right? Yeah, or the end of Cloverfield Paradox. Right, because in Cloverfield Lane, it's it's almost like the world is like done. It's been taken over and there's nothing out there. Yeah, so Cloverfield Paradox starts before the other two movies but ends after the other two movies. Oh, you think it ends after Cloverfield Lane? Yeah. I I was thinking the ending of Cloverfield Lane is the furthest the end of the furthest away, yeah. Uh, it could be cuz I mean they start But I don't know. They're talking about making progress, but I I just don't it doesn't feel that way. I don't know. I mean, who knows? They, I wonder, you, you never know how time works in space and dimension traveling. Like, they could have been in dimension two for like years. Yeah. Or I they mean, could I have been. I guess probably not because we saw that little girl and she was the same age. Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely think, yeah, I don't know. But they could have been in dimension two for five minutes their time. But then when they go back, be five years in the future. You know what I mean? Like basically time yeah. traveling. Yeah. So the more I think about it, the worse it, this is. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it either. It's really bad. I do not recommend it. I don't even like normally we try to talk about what we would do to fix it. And I would say not make this movie. I would say. Yeah, I don't know. There's not much to do. There's nothing I would f- really it's, redeemable. It's, there's so many little things that are dumb that are easily fixable, though. Yeah. But, then but you, even then, I don't then know if it makes happens. it a good movie. <laughs> it's just they're sitting up in space, and they start the thing, and it works, and nothing happens. 
Well, okay. I, I mean, these things could have been better explained, like the guy's arm and... But that's the, the problem. There's no decent explanation for that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, like that's why that's why there isn't an explanation because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I agree. No. I don't know. The the most tragic news though is that there's another one coming. Oh, really? There's supposed to be a fourth movie. I don't know anything about it other than it's like the end. Oh, that's good. That needs to So I'm trying to think what go look at Sundance and see what won the most awards <laughs> and how can they shoehorn Cloverfield into that? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's gotta be like a romantic comedy that ends with aliens. Yeah, like a Romeo and Juliet uh with aliens. <laughs> Because humans and aliens shouldn't be able to be together, and that's the tragedy oh, of it. I gotcha. I didn't realize that. I thought you meant it was going to be Romeo and Juliet plus aliens. I didn't realize one of Romeo or Juliet was going to be an alien. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I don't know. It's uh, Apparently, it's already almost done production or something wacky. This is definitely going to ruin his career, right? Like, this is... Like, J.J. Abrams, this is going to be really hard to come back from, I would imagine. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's got another Star Wars movie coming out. He needs to go back to doing original things. I don't know. Like, I think he got lucky with Lost. You think so? Yeah, I think that's more what it is. I think... Thank you. Well, what'd you, uh, what'd you think of the movie Super 8? I never liked it. I thought it was good. I liked it. Yeah. It's, I know a lot of people did. I just, it seemed boring. I, I've only watched it once and it was a long time ago. I've seen it, I've only seen it twice, but I, I do really, really enjoy the, the train crashing scene. I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was so suspenseful. I don't know. Um, he also did Alias. I never watched that. I didn't either, but it was a, a well-received show. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else he did. Yeah, I don't know. That's it. He's 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 he's, he's running the risk of turning into M Night Shyamalan. Shaman Lama Ding Dong. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just it's it's tough, man. Yeah, but uh that's all I have to say about it. I probably won't ever watch it again. No, I definitely I'm, won't watch it again. I, I, I'm thinking about going back just to that final scene and seeing if we could see what happens with that pod. <laughs> I'm just curious. Seen. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably worth finding out. But uh yeah, so you if you enjoy our show, if you want to help us out, you can go over to patreon.com slash I seen that. Vote for Taylor or Alan. Whoever has the least amount of votes at the end of the month has to pay a punishment. Um, you also yes. get all our episodes two weeks in advance. And you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod. And we Woo. just want to say thank you to Boss Play, who sponsors our show. They are an escape room in Oceanside, California. You should check yep. them out if you're around that area. Bo show.